You look great, Angus. <laughs> it has a mind of its own today. <laughs> I was, yours is yours is making me think I got one of those too. <laughs> All right. As a preliminary matter to our grooming, this is Rob Benchley for me to confirm that all members and persons who anticipated on the agenda or present can hear me. When I call your name, uh, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, okay, Caroline's not here. Mary Lathrop. Hello. Thank you. Angus McLeod. Here. Clement Durkis. Here. Thank you. And Rob Benchley is here. Uh, let's see. Good morning. This open meeting of the Wisconsin Advisory Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of the emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gathering and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement for the open meetings laws to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials, uh, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access is not does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. Uh, for this meeting, uh, the Wisconsin Advisory Board is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials and provided members of the body are available on the town's website. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. Uh, now we're turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for the effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I'll introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude the remarks. The chair will go down the line of members. Inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions, please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to clearly and speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair. Uh, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public who have not, who that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names, please, and be acknowledged and speak through the chair. Each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. All right. And uh, I'll take a motion to for the adoption of the agenda as, as presented. I'll present that, or I'll make that motion. Okay, Mayor. thank you very much. And I okay. hear a second. All those in favor? Uh, Mary Lathrop? Yes. Thank you. Angus McLeod? Hi. Thank you. Clement Durkis? Yes. And Rob is a yes. Motion is made, seconded, and it's unanimous. And... Uh, Let's see. I guess we're going straight. Uh, yes. So here we are at five Westerwick. Hi, Mr. Chair. Item, item number one. Proceed. Sorry. Hi, my name is Irina. I'm with the workshop APD. I'll be here representing this property. Um, this is a house located on Westerwick. Um, it's a similar model to a house we've been here with before. Um, and it's just the house that we're applying for right now. Um, the house has mostly visibility from the north, from Westerwick. Um, the ridge height is 24 feet, 10 inches. Um, it's a white trim, Quaker gray sash with a painted chimney. Um, we have a lot of lattice work wrapping up the building as well as um, really low kind of slung porches going across the front. Um, that first elevation in the north is um, where I mentioned there will be visibility. Um, and yeah. 
Great, thank you, Irina. Uh, you guys were doing the house next door too, am I correct? We are, correct. Okay. Uh, anybody like to comment? Uh, at, at first blush, this- I this like looks, it. Looks really good to me. Yeah, this is this is Mary. I like it. You ever yeah. heard me say that before? <laughs> I'm curious, is the, the land to the east of this, is that conservation land or is it still developable? I believe that is part of the Sconset Trust property. Well, the the land just to the right is a lot. There is a lot there, but then the Sconset Trust um, Heller Trail is that portion. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's not really abutting Sconset Trust, but it's one lot away. Thank you. And that's where we have an easement through the lot to the right that goes into our trail. Oh, off of Westerwick. Off of Westerwick, yes, correct. Good job. Thank you. I think this is sympathetic to the environment and captures a, a number of details from um, typical Sconset cottages. I, I don't have any concerns. Thank you. Uh, I have no concerns either, except of course, as you will see, there's the pool and the pool house once again. The garage is in the front, but that seems to be the way Cannonberry is going. Yeah. And it all seems very compatible. Okay, then I guess uh, we're all of a mind that we don't have any concerns. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Irina. Are we gonna do the uh, pool and hardscape on this one or is that later? Yes, I believe the pool and hardscape is also um, okay. on the agenda. All right. Oh yeah, there it is. So this application is um, for the pool, a uh, small outdoor kitchen and the rest of the hardscaping. And am I, this is Mary, am I correct that um, the back lot line, so to the left of the pool, that that's the Heller uh, trail? No, no. Where's the Heller trail? Um, at the top it, of the This is Clement, no, the, it would be, you see, this is that's where the Heller Trail, the other, the lot to the right of this lot. Yes. Abuts uh, the trust property. I see. And the trail, if you'll notice the, the white driveway, our easement goes to the right of the right driveway and to the All left right. of the other property. Got it. Just, just that's Spindrift. That's the Vales house where the yes. driveway. Yes. yes. Okay. So this, the pool is at the sort of the bottom end of the lot. Street. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So the pool will be actually up against the neighbors yet to be built. Correct. Okay. But yeah, but, but set back quite a bit. Well, if you look at the, if you look at the street plan again, can we go back to that? Um, plot plan, yeah. So you see there's a house on the next street over, which I'm afraid is called Reaper Circle. Um, and at the end of, at the circle of Reaper Circle, there is obviously a lot. So the pool will come up against that house, I would assume, whatever gets in that spot. Yes. There's nothing there now, but that's where the pool logic, the, the pool mechanics are going. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. But this does not include the future cabana or the future garage. We're just talking about a pool and hardscaping right now. Correct. Yeah. 
Okay. No complaints. Yep. Okay. Thank you. No concerns. No concerns. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Arena. Thank you. Arena, before we let you go, um, I, ha yeah. I have a question about um, the um, the beginnings of all the drives, the aprons. Are, mm -hmm. Did most of them tend to be the Belgian block as opposed to cobblestone? I believe they are Belgian block with um, the shell driveways. OK, yep. thanks. No problem. And I, we actually have one more application next. Oh, on the other side, down? Yep. Down on the west side. Correct. So this is a property on the west side towards the beginning of Canterbury Lane. Um, again, it's similar to a model that we've been here with before. And it's um, a one prop house and then a small shed. Um, although, is this the, sorry, this is the pool application first. Um, so um, this would just be for the pool located in the rear of that property and the hardscaping and as well. Again, no concerns. It seems consistent with the rest of what's happening in there. Thank mm -hmm. you, Angus. Yeah, this is Rob. I don't have any concerns that it's, um, you know, it, it's a nice distance off the off the street. They've given themselves a lot of buffer and uh, yeah. Yep, and it's up against, um, are we looking at the tree growth there? Because that's back up against the uh, government properties. Yes. Uh, back up against the Moran, yeah. Yeah, the government property. I mean, the, the, where the houses are. Coast Guard. Yeah. Is it still Coast Guard? I, it's like, yes, yes. Is that so-called spring or silver street that runs up behind there or? I believe it's called Packet Drive. Oh, well that's, yeah. Uh, no, that's, I think Rob's talking about the government street. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. this, this is actually opposite Sleet wing circle, I think. This house is actually oh, yeah. a fleet wing circle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Boardwalk. What's the deal with boardwalk? Um, well, there's That's a whole there's a there's a sort of a dune theme going on in that. See on uh -huh. the street side. Right. Yeah. So could we, uh, Holly, could you move it a little bit to the right of, so we could see more of the, nope, the other direction. Sorry, the other right. Yep, 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 thank you. Okay, so that's boardwalk, which goes <laughs> in space, in the place of uh, pavers or something like that. You're having wooden boardwalk around this house. Interesting, never seen that before. Except in Codfish Park. Well, yeah, but there was real sand there. Ah. <laughs> All right. Well, I will, I will take, this is Clement. I'm gonna take Caroline's place today to say that you will notice that they have fenced in, it looks like a proper fencing around the pool equipment, which is in the way back corner. So good job on that. And they did that also on the other house that we just looked at. So noted. Thank you, Clement. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, so that was the main house, and do we no, need that to was the, no? That was the pool. Oh, that was the pool. Sorry. Do we get to see <laughs> the main? Yes, the main house and shed applications will be following. Sorry, I. I, I thought we ganged them up. That's fine. No problem. So the main house, like we said, is located at the western side at the beginning of Canterbury. Um, the front or the 
east side is the side that will have the most visibility as you're driving down Canterbury Lane. Um, it's a, the house has white trim, white sashes, and a white painted brick chimney, as well as exposed rafter tails um, and a lattice wrapped front porch. Angus, what is your sense about white painted chimney in a cottage like this? Does that seem? Uh, that was going to be my comment, Mary. You called. It. <laughs> uh, no, I feel like uh, the other one is 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 way off the road, but then this one is is a little bit closer in. I I, I think a, a natural chimney would would fit better um, in that yeah. area. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I like the details. Yeah. Notice the porthole on the front door. I'm noticing that. I like that. Well, I like it, except it's too big a house for that kind of a door. I mean, generally, when you have a door like that, you have it on a small, you know, one and a half story house. This is a full two story house. So it's a little it's, it's a little incongruous, I would say. Unless you're very tall, you will not be able to look out that porthole to see who is there. Right. Ah. Okay. <laughs> there are other cottagey details here that it kind of fits in with the rafter tails and the the relatively low slope of the roof. Yeah, and the corbel chimney and the and the owl. I, th I think that I think those are all good details. I mean, I like rafter tails and I and and the shed dormers and all of that sort of thing. But there's something that's just a little bit off on it. From my perspective, it's a little too suburban. Suburban. Yeah. And maybe it's that bank of three windows on the first floor. I don't know. It looks like suburban New Jersey to me. With a porthole? <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rob, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Been there. I haven't been there in weeks, so I I admit <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I haven't been there in decades. But yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chair, nobody's picking up the uh, A window in the middle of the B's. Uh, I, was just, I was just looking at that, Holly, and I like that they're not all the same. I think that adds to the cottagey feeling of it. Oh yeah. Somehow I somehow I feel like A should be bigger. It's just it, a tiny bit bigger than the B. So, you know. Oh, as in even more bigger, just to yeah. go. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. More and of that a contrast. Might offset, that might offset the, the fact that the dormer on the right doesn't quite, the shed dormer doesn't quite work i don't know it's a i feel like that shed dormer needs to be a little lower to give it a little bit of more idiosyncrasy bring it oh i see you're saying bring the uh bring the start connect the, down lower start the shed dormer uh you know a good two feet off the ridge pole beef up window a and, and really, you know, go with a little idiosyncrasy, not because this is not your basic symmetrical house. Right. Have some fun with it, flaunt it. <laughs> All right, any other, uh, any other comments? Bring down shed, okay, great. All right, then. Uh, I guess we're moving on. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I just uh, wanted I, to make a comment, if you yes. don't mind. Um, I think the only, maybe this pergola, is that a pergola on the back? 
Oh, yeah. It seems to be the very most modern kind of element on this structure. I just wanted to point that out. And that's probably there to facilitate use of the pool and you know, sitting around by the pool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's it with the with all those gangs of windows. Mm. Oh, just having a hard time seeing it. But that faces the Coast Guard property. It does. And the pool. Yeah, that won't have any visibility from the road. Ali, are you commenting on the contemporary details of it? That, yes. That seems yes. to be trending now that it's very square. There aren't, aren't the ornate, you know, ends of the horizontal pieces and so forth or columns. They're just, it's kind of minimalist, straight, boxy. That's yeah. all natural. Yes. It just doesn't seem to fit in with the exposed raptor tails. I don't know, in my <laughs> opinion. I don't know, just kind of opposite, but that's just a personal If you preference. zoom in on the west elevation, you can see the, um, the members of the pergola coming out of the building. Okay. You would see their exposed ends, and they are kind of cut at a taper to match and tie back a little bit with the exposed raptor tail language. Okay. Okay. I think it was more difficult to see it on this elevation. So I appreciate that. Yes, okay. no problem. Right. Oh, I see that now. Okay, yeah, thank you for that clarification. Got it. Next one is the shed. All right. So this is just a small shed located on the south side of the property. Um, ties in with the raptor tails. Um, also would have white trim, sash, and a natural shed door. Looks just like a shed to me. Yep. Yeah. Those bicycles will fit right in there. That's about all. <laughs> yep. Beach chairs. Right. In the east elevation that shows the doors, if possible, it looks it looks like the hat's getting lifted a little bit. If it were possible to bring the the eave down, um, not to the point that the rafter tails are in the way of the door, but do you know what I mean? Bring mm -hmm. bring it down so there's less room between the doors and the and the soffit. Yes, we can explore that. That's all, it's a cute shed. All right, yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, thank you all. Irina, thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, uh, item number six, LBC Wisconsin LLC, Nine Hawk Circle. Hi there, it's Adam Davis with Goldsmith Architects. I'm on the Hi, three items. <clears throat> um, so yeah, just to go over this plan briefly, uh, what we're doing on the main house is uh, rotating its direction uh, by five degrees, just pointing it a little more uh, for a view in between the neighbors to the south. Um, and given the curved street on Nine Hawk Circle, there's not necessarily a straight line that it needs to abide to. So we're hoping for that new orientation. And then we're also added a small bump out off the living room on the west elevation, um, just south of where the entry is on that side. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, right there. It'll just be a continuation of the roof line um, as opposed to uh, any difference in pitch. But it was our goal to match similar to what the kitchen bump out is immediately to the left of that with similar windows and similar uh, eave height and such. Yeah. Oh, relatively straightforward. <laughs> 
better to do it on paper than when you after you build the foundation. Yes. <laughs> I, this is Rob, I, I, I don't have any concerns. Uh, but I'm happy to hear from the rest of my board members. Rob, this is Angus. I, uh, I think that when, uh, when the roof line is continuous like that, it makes, um, uh, rather than the, the bay to the left that it's uh, mimicking, it, uh, reads more le less as additive massing and more like subtractive massing of the of what's missing on the left and right of that. Um, I'd rather see a, a a break in it either below or above the existing roof line uh, or some change in pitch so it looks more like an add-on. Okay, so more like it could either hit underneath the eave line or creep up on the roof a little bit, but see that break. Okay. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the bay to the left underneath the gable is, um, it, it looks like an add-on, but yeah. this, this feels like something's been taken away on either side of this bay. Mm -hmm. No, that's, an, I understand that. Um, we did play with a few different pitches. And given that the the roof that it's dying into is, uh, I believe, an eight and twelve, so to get it to hit higher on that, um, it made for a strange location of the break. It still ends up very low on the roof instead of higher, closer to the ridge. Um, hence, why we decided, like, well, well, will it fit if we just continue that roof line? And it does. We also tried a gable that just gets too busy as far as that elevation. Um, but we, we could always go with a slightly different eave height so that it hits a little more appropriately. Well, this is Clement and I, it, this is just a, but it seems to line up with the, um, the entrance part. So, you know, that's all on the same level, which to me is okay. Mm -hmm. But. Oh, that's a, that's a good, um... That's a good thought, Clement. Is thank you. The bay, the bay windows are higher than than the porch, the entry windows. Mm -hmm. Maybe that that could help if that bay window that is proposed drops a little bit, so that the head the head height is more in line with those with the door and windows, and then that sort of highlights that asymmetrical <laughs> middle bay. Yep, and then yeah, then potentially the roof line could sneak under the eave of the living room roof. Yeah, and for a a, sh a shed, a eight pitch is pretty extreme, um, mm -hmm. so that may, that could get flattened out some. Yep. No, oh, I'm certainly open to that. Um, so, so the suggestion is is to bring the tops of the windows down a bit. Maybe bring the eave and the windows down a little bit so that they're closer in line with what's on the porch. And that would get oh, the see. roof underneath the busyness of the roof and soffit. Yeah, good idea. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, tell me again. So you just bring it in line with the with the windows just, to the to the left of it, the, the roof of the, gotcha. roof and, you know the the the, the soffit and the windows lower so that the roof line okay. can hit below the main roof. All right, gotcha. So that the gable and the windows will will look higher than everything, as opposed to more aligned with the the bump out that we're looking at now. So it'll go level level with a pump up in the middle. All right. Great. Any other uh, thoughts? The high windows make sense at the kitchen sink, but maybe not as much at the window seat. So that might help in every regard. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, I'm happy right. to make that. All right. All right. Well, uh, now we're no issues with the orientation change. That makes sense. Get the view. Yep. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. Yep. I'm just trying to write some uh, notes so here. So on this project, this is a new application for a uh, pool at 16 Canterbury. Um, and along with this application was also reciting the garage, uh, pushing it further back on the lot, um, just for more separation from the house. And fairly standard as far as screening and whatnot, we would do the, the hidden fence within Privet Hedge with a simple wooden gate. Ah. Yikes, there it is. 16, okay. Um, Mr. Chair, I got a question for Adam. Did you already um, do an apron when the house was brought here? Uh, for the driveway? Yes. Uh, we have not. Uh, this is not our full hardscape proposal. Okay. There is a cut in the driveway already. I know that. And we're working with the down on the water and sewer hookups and such. But yeah, we'll, we'll have another submission for a full hardscape. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. How do you get the garage? Uh, it's just going to be grass. And so it's really just it, it, because we're reusing an existing structure that we're moving from Hawk Circle, uh, we just decided to keep it as a garage and it'll be more for off season storage. So I'll just drive on the grass. Oh, this is the this is the house that's coming from the proper residence yep. from the yep. proper lot. Got it. OK, yep. so that's their little guest cottage. I remember that one. Yeah, yep. and we're not going to do a driveway back to that. Yep. It's again just meant for storage. OK. So this application is just for the pool. Yep. And then the next uh, agenda item is for reciting the, the garage structure which, well, we changed a door on that north elevation, but it's a new door and then just pushing it back to be more in line with keeping the pool and the, and the garage just a little further away from the house. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't have any, I don't have no, any No, the issue. only thing is Caroline's not here, so we don't see the pool equipment. I assume it's back in one corner. <laughs> It's uh, it was, behind the cabana. Yeah, it would likely be behind, like basically where the garage cabana takes that little L shape in the back. We'll oh, I see. It. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I see a little square there. Oh, there. Yep. What? What is? What's at um, beyond the back of this lot? Government. What, what? Coast Guard. Yeah. yeah. Silver oh. Street. <laughs> right. Silver Street. <laughs> It and looks pretty really like long. the back of the pool looks pretty close to the back of the lot. So, I mean, to get some planting in there, I see 10 feet nice. extrapolating. It looks like the edge of the pool might be 13 or 14 feet, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but to fit in planting and walking around the pool, it seems pretty tight. Okay. Oh. I mean, even if you do a straight Six line feet. instead of an undulating line of growth back on the back of the lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like, excuse me, it looks like 10 feet. I mean, a hedge can get to be eight feet wide. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I mean, it's not necessarily meant to be a, a natural area. Um, but we're, we're within the setbacks and there will be a, a fence and buffer. Mr. Chair, through you, um, yep. Thank one you. thing, um, 
Adam, I don't see, and I may have missed it, but I don't see the like a photo of your proposed patio material. Usually that's typical with these hardscapes. Oh, yep. I mean, it's, the intention is just standard bluestone. Okay. All right. That should be indicated, I would say. I will note that. Adam, you said you were coming back with a more formal hardscaping plan? Yep. Okay. Yeah, this is much more just uh, that we can start the process on putting a pool in versus gotcha. not. <laughs> in time for Memorial Day, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah get in line, get it in is. line for that. <laughs> yes, and we're not sure if it's gonna happen before next Memorial Day. It's, they're busy. <laughs> Adam, has this house been moved? I haven't gone down there recently. Not yet. No, not I think yet. we're okay. hoping for first or second week of June. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. What did so, what did they do with it with, with a little uh, Glowacki shed? Uh, that's going to be used as a temporary office for our contractor. <laughs> uh, perfect. Yep. Uh, so this, uh, just as I mentioned before, same structure. Uh, we're uh, sorry the PDF doesn't read as well as a print copy, but you can see the existing elevation that was proposed above the current north elevation, where it was simply just a door and a window. Uh, we're proposing to do a, a nicer slider, so it'll work a little better as a cabana space off the pool. Got and then it. also relocating, pushing the building further back on the site. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oof. This thing is jumping around. Here we go. I don't have any concerns. No. No concern. Anybody? No. Nope. All right. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. See you soon. <laughs> bye, bye. All right. Uh, everybody, uh, boop, 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 boom. 28 Main Street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A pergola on that garage slack. Cupola, cupola and cupola. pergola. Oh, that's the cupola, I think I meant to say. <laughs> well, they've got a pergola and a cupola. Sort of, yeah. Uh, I don't know if anybody's here uh, for this application, but is this for uh, ventilation or is this a uh, Mr. Chair, I don't think anybody's here for this application. Okay, thank this you. Is emeritus application. Nobody's here for them. Well, this is this is Mary. I see absolutely no reason for this cupola. No, <laughs> no aesthetic reason. No, um, no other reason. It, it's like no, they don't they don't need it, and it has no it has no uh, resonance any place else in the neighborhood. I know. I don't. Well, the thing that we liked about this thing that was masquerading as a garage, but it's really a cabana or a guest cottage, was that it looked like it was a garage from the street in an appropriate place for a garage, so that it kept its profile low. So that with this being a very high profile house, historically, this was in keeping. I don't think the cupola helps the case that it had made successfully before. I agree with Mary. And this is Clement. If you look at that north elevation, the cupola is like, it's huge compared yeah. to the rest of the house. It's makes, it's ridiculous. And we, we have been walking around a lot and there are a few cupolas in Sconset, but not many. And not yeah, of this not, scale on top of the little little garage, just as 
we do not need Royal Barry Wills to make an appearance on this particular property. Oh, God. The proportions just feel, and it's, it's especially apparent in the North Elevation that the proportions of the cupola just, it's, uh, it, it's, it's top, it's heavy and it's high and it's large in comparison to the, the gable, the simple gable of the, the existing shed design. Yep. Agree. Mr. Chair, um, I'd want to get everybody's um, thoughts on the proposed pent roof and pergola on the east. As okay. Well. All right. Is that part of this application? Yes, sir. Yes. You very, yes, it, yes, indeed it is. Thank you. <clears throat> and this is, uh, oh, yes, I see it. So it's got, uh, it's a bracketed pergola. Is that what I'm looking at? Mm. That beam looks heavy that all the little horizontal pieces yeah. are sitting on. It's very heavy and it's only coming out of what, two feet at the most? I don't understand it. This is Rob, it just seems like, like a lot of heavy details that uh, that are too heavy. Well, I, I'm looking at that right now. It says add a pent roof. So you've got a roof and then you've got pergola boards that jut out on top of the roof. I, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time reading that too. Yeah, I, I think this was, a, this was a good thing that we approved before. And this is the, would you like fries with that version? No. Okay. And the apple pie, I, I think both both of them are are again heavy for this modest little. Exactly. Structure. So before they just had a little a little um, roof over the door, you know, which is which was fine. Right. And Less they don't need to add the whole roof over the other doors yeah it's like the scale of what is crossing across the the doors facing main street got transferred over to the side door and it, it seems too heavy to overbuild mm -hmm. a little awning over the door would be cute uh but but not the whole bracketed roof system Well, if you look down, we did a no. I see. Never mind. Yeah, I think the little bracketed roof over the door is 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 nice. I thought we'd already approved that, but it, I don't know whether we have or haven't. Maybe we haven't because there's the over the main doors. Yeah, but not over the side door. No, I like that over the garage doors, the so-called garage doors, and then over this little main door. Yeah, I, I guess think that's, that's a new proposal. The east, I, that's new. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. So the stuff in the middle is what we've approved. And the 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 top and bottom rows are what they're proposing. Well, but we didn't approve. It looks like we didn't approve the awning over the front door. If you look at the east elevation, previous north. Yep. See, there is the, there is the little thing over the top there, but yep. then the east elevation, there's nothing over the top of the door. Oh, that side door. Yes, I see. What yeah, you that mean. side door, just the single door on the left, and it it looks kind of nice to have a roof over that door. That, yeah, I like that, but I don't like the rest of the stuff. Right. Okay. Duly noted. Great. Thank you. I agree. <clears throat> uh, okay. Mike over side door. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Shall we move to number 10, 35 New Street? Yes. 
Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh oh. Sorry, I just. Oops. That does not look like the. That does okay. not look like the building. That's so funny. It's on the site plan. <laughs> it's not the shape of the building. Oh, uh, is that the old garage? That's that. I don't think so. That that going looks, the garage. That looks yeah, I was. That this looks is I was confused by that too. I was confused by that too. But the um, because that that building's actually over on the on New Street. It's it's on the bottom left corner. Correct. Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. So I think I think unfortunately maybe when somebody pulled that file, they pulled an old site plan. Yeah. But our new proposed site plan should be correct. And it's in the exact same, we're proposing to put the building back in exactly the same place that it was, it currently is. Okay. So this Clement was built. Um, our walk. Uh, sorry. Uh, I, I, Clement and I happened to walk this area this morning, just doing our homework. And yeah. we noted the same thing that we were yeah. confused as to the placement of the building. And you're, you're absolutely right. We're... Yeah. Yeah, got it. So it was built, I believe this was there. Yeah, and it was built um, when Chris Holland did the renovations on the house, um, you know, probably 20, maybe 20 years ago. I'd have to look up the exact date. But about that, about that. That's my recollection, yeah. Yeah, and, and my client was really liked the building. Um, and you'll see, I think the new design reflects the fact that they like the character of this structure, but they needed a little bit more interior space and because they want to run some utilities, by the time they pick it up and build a, you know, dig a crawl space and then raise the roof and make it a little wider, it just seemed um, more logical to uh, put this up for um, adoption. Adoption, yeah, it's a cute structure. It Small. is. It should be fairly easy to move. And then the new design was to reflect a, a similar aesthetic, although we, um, well, we can look at that separately. Yeah, that this is Rob. This is clearly the hand of Chris Holland <laughs> in those drawings, and um, that that structure would look very nice at around mm, sixty-five Sankety Road. So, thank I'm you. Thinking, Rob, and I was thinking I might be able to sandwich that onto my lot. Okay, all right. I'm kidding. You can have right. it. You have room. Yeah, I'll okay. fight over. All right, all right. This is Rob. All right, we should keep the chatter down. But um, yes, so. Uh, putting it up for adoption is a terrific idea, and uh, I don't think we have any issues uh, with this moving, do we? I don't have an issue with it moving because it has no historic significance. The house itself does, right. unless Chris obliterated right. that in his last work. But um, I did have a question or two on the design, but we haven't gotten there yet, right? No. We can get there now if you'd like. Let's get there. Thank you, Holly. And my, my question was more about uh, just getting into the shed section. Um, it, they will, am I correct, Lisa, in that they will lose the, um, the garage space entirely? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay. So, yeah, that's right. so my question is kind of moot. It was like, how the heck are you going to drive a car around on that bank to get it into that space, which is very clearly marked on your plan as as shed, not yeah. garage. It's really just for bikes and, and other other stuff. Yeah. Um, now, now they use the garage as that functional space, and actually, interestingly enough, the existing building is a second dwelling. It has a little um, four foot kitchenette sort of in yeah. the back that I'm not sure it's ever been used, but it's there and it had second dwelling status. So we, we did go back and get that. Um, so they realized they have to give that up in, in terms of making this a true cottage. And that's why we put the shed on the back. Got it. Okay. So let's take a look. This is a, this is a corner lot. So the north elevation is actually what you're going to see when you come in the driveway, the existing drive. Mm -hmm. Yep, with the entry um, door. East elevation is what they are seeing from their house, mm -hmm. looking at their guest cottage. The north elevation, oh, well, no, sorry. 
it, it's the south and west elevations that would be visible from the streets, from Burnell and from New Street. New Street, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so that's what you see from New Street. Although you can't see much because there's a lot of vegetation right. there. Yeah. And it's also very high up. It is, it's on the bank. And that, nope. No, it's the, the top one. That, the next one up. Uh, no. Yeah, that one. Yeah, west, sorry, yes. So that's what you would see from Burnell Street. No. Which is also well vegetated. Exactly. Yeah. I have no concerns. I, I can hear the sandy bare feet crunching on the floor now. <laughs> Uh, I have no concerns, uh, Angus or Clement. I only thought it, it's in that elevation you just showed, Holly, it, uh, that's what's going to be facing New Street. Yeah. Just the amount of blank space yeah. on there. But, um, but, you know, that also helps it to read as a utilitarian building, you know, shed. Um, so in that respect, uh, is that fairly well vegetated there or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I might have a photo of it um, if nobody else does, let me just. And you're actually kind of driving below it. You're probably, when you're driving by, you're probably a good four feet below the grade. <clears throat> I think it's reminiscent of the, of the 2004, building and um, I think it will fit in just fine. Yeah, it's not appreciably bigger, which is, boy, is that a treat to see that, you know, something hasn't been removed and been tripled in size. Yeah, we, ju we were just trying to get a little bit more breathing room on the inside. It was a little tight mm -hmm. as size it was to, to get living space as well as um, the bathroom. I have some, I mean, I have one, okay picture that I can pull up. It's full of, I don't know, we obviously got snow this year because there's snow all over the ground. I can't remember when this was taken, but you don't really see a lot of the vegetation in this photo. Nobody took any pictures from the road, but you can well, see- Well, we just walk, as, as Mary yeah. said, this is Clement. Mary and I just walked by there and it's heavily vegetated. Okay. Full Great. of vines and everything. You you, yeah. you won't see a thing. And, and it, yeah, it's And fine. there's no intention of, of opening up, fun. obviously. No, they wouldn't want to open up to those roads. No, and I can also say that you got a lot of space inside that little building. So good job for that. Oh, thank you. Okay, if there are no more concerns, thank you very much, Lisa. Okay, thank you. Have yep. a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. too. Thanks. Ooh, and that concludes. Uh, number 12. Did we number 12 we did, because that's the move on. That's the... Uh, we went over that. Oh, we went we? over that back, back over. Okay. Yeah, because we did that right after we did Nine Hawk Circle because it's the same. I mean, yep. it came from Nine Hawk Circle. Yep. Are you talking about the Ten Cannonberry? Yeah, we've done Ten Cannonberry. That's the pool lab. <laughs> no, this one actually oh. is a fenestration change. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we've Canterbury. seen it. Yeah, I know we have so many Canterbury's going on. <laughs> um, the Canterbury so, Advisory Board. So, so this is that. Oh, we did 16 before, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So this is that accessory structure. Um, remember that double lot that they have? Oh, yeah. So this is we looked at the lot. second driveway or whatever. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Was this the house with the two-story windows? I think so. Okay. Can't remember. I think so with that long pool. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at, <clears throat> oh yes. And this is the pool house, the cabana, if you will. Oof. Way off the way off the street. 
What's going on on the west elevation? Could we? That big blank wall, what's the story there? I don't know yet. Natural cedar trim. It looks like what's running between the outdoor shower and the garage. I mean, the what are we calling this? Guest house? Cabana? I think it's a cabana. I think because if you actually notice, they're indicating this as a primary dwelling since this is a its own separate lot. Yeah. They're probably having to meet code to have it like that. Hmm. I think the view of, well, first of all, this whole structure, I think is just going to be obliterated by all the vegetation and the way the <laughs> orientation of the drive goes and all that. But um, if you were actually looking at this elevation from the edge of their property, the, the outdoor shower would be standing, you know, in the middle of that blank wall. Okay. Oh, the west elevation? Okay. Oh, I see. That's that box. If you look in the bottom right, where the floor plan shows the, the shower along that blank wall. Yeah. So is the shower freestanding? Yes. Okay. I can feel that wind blowing by already. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual. Or is that a, oh yeah, so it is. Outdoor shower. Maybe they can put the mechanical. Oh no, it's right. It's right near the mechanicals. Okay. Okay, the pool equipment's behind the outdoor shower. Oh, I see. You'd never even see that wall, would you? No. No. Not it. No problems. But there's a window looking out on the pool equipment. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Well, that way you can see it <laughs> and hear it. It's a test. So it actually the the shower is completely enclosed. Yeah. And it's the bathroom window that looks to the pool equipment, so they might keep that window closed. All right. Shall I, I don't have any up? issues, especially due to visibility. Yeah, yeah, thank you. No concerns. Due to visibility. EIS. Thank you. All right. Uh, that's all very nice. We got through this pretty well. Thank you, everybody. Um, I to lost my agenda. Mr. Chair, we did have North Gully Road footpath repair discussion on here for Clement. Yeah. We kept it on nothing. there for you. Thank you. But there's nothing new, is there? Or do we need to discuss it? I'm they, not aware of anything new. I'm not either, except that I know the landscaper volunteered to clear it. And we said, please do not clear it. So I hope that is still what stands. Seems like there's been a, enough clearing along that. Yeah, along that bluff. Right there. Yeah. I mean, it looks like they're preparing that for a build. That lot uh, at the base of um, at the base. Oh, they of are. Yes, they are. Seven we gully. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen anything. All we saw was the no. move. No, and that, no. that's okay. We haven't seen anything yet, but I'm I I don't I don't know. I I always hear the rumor that Belichick, when we lose a bit more beachfront, is gonna move that front house that he owns back onto mm. that lot. But I don't know if that's true or not. But now he wants to clear off the, the little shed that used to be somebody's house or somebody's garden shed. Well, no, it, used to, it used to be the boat and house. Done, the boat house for Mrs. Boat house. House. And right. now it's going to the Getches's property next to the land bank. Uh, Playground. 
Well, which I, can, is, I can say this, that there's a couple of land bank properties that are kind of in between those two different properties there as well. But you haven't seen anything yet. No. So we okay. can't speculate until something is no. submitted. That's the biggest thing. Speculation okay. can be done so much, but until we actually have an application. <coughs> yeah. Good. Uh, see nothing. That's great. <laughs> this is Rob. Uh, I, I, I have a little bit of knowledge about that. And and at the at the moment, they're, they were just trying to clean up the lot. The whole business of that bank being stripped was a whole nother. Didn't involve Belichick. It didn't involve. It involves uh, people up on the bank and the people at the Wade Cottages. And I, I think that's being dealt with in a whole nother venue, if it's being dealt with at all. But uh, uh, I do know that Belichick's people were interested in coordinating or cooperating with other entities about the North Gully Road cleanup as well. So they're, they're all taking care of that. And I'm sure we'll see it at some point because it does involve the DPW <clears throat> and some landscaping and stuff. So I don't remember seeing the uh, an application for the split rail fence that runs along the bluff walk up there. No. Good point, Angus. We never that, did. That just kind of happened. Yeah. That's in front of the Hakes and in front of uh, Wade. Wade Cottages. Yeah. So defense defenses not come to us. Do they just go to consent generally? Holly? Usually if they're in keeping with the design guidelines, which usually those split rail fences are, um, they, they usually go on consent. But I'd have to ask Kathy if that's something they've seen, just because it, it, if it's consentable, it doesn't necessarily mean they've seen something. Uh -huh. So I can ask. Do we know okay. what address that is, or is it right at Wade Cottages? Uh, it's in front of Wade Cottages and the Hakes house, which would be <clears throat> Bell Street. So they would be Shell Street addresses. Okay. But it, uh, I also, I mean, I understand that it is Seven Gullies. That those are those are the Seven Gully owns up the bank and to that point where the fence is. So that would be their their lot line. It is Seven Gully North Gully Road. You correct. I can look. I'm not aware. Okay. It was, yeah. Actually, it's off. It's called off North Gully Road. It's it's west of Seven Gully. With the same owner as Seven Gully. Yes. Now it is. Yes. Okay. And it goes to the top of the bank near the footpath. Okay. So the presumption is that the fence is on Seven or North Gullies, off North Gullies property. Property, yes. That's yes. what I understand. Okay. Yeah. And it does line up with, if you notice when you're walking it, it lines up with Linda um, Collins. Collins fence, split rail okay. fence. And okay. also <laughs> where uh, Wade Green put in a tiny little private area for the Wade Cottage okay. people to sit on the top of the bluff, it lines up with that. Okay. So I, Assume that is something about the um, property line. I see. Okay, great. I will. Uh, I'll write up these notes and pass them around to everybody. Uh, Thank you. They were good the last time. The. Um, I will probably not take a whole week to do it. Uh, maybe a couple of days. That's and worth the time that you took, Rob. Those were perfect notes. Oh, good. They were. <laughs> I wasn't on the last call, so I I can I made no comment. Okay, I was just testing. All right. Um, Could we get a no motion to approve the comments, Mr. Chair? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If that's appropriate, let's take a motion to approve the comments we've made. So moved. So moved. Thank you. All those in favor, Clement. Yes. Thank you. Caroline uh, is not here. Uh, Mary Lathrop. Yes. Uh, Angus. Aye. Thank you. Rob is an aye. And uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved.
Thank you. All those in favor, uh, Mary Lathrop. Aye. Thank you, Angus. Aye. Clement. Aye. Robs and I, the ayes have it. All right, thank you all very much. Thank, thank you. you.